I'm Jeff Chandler for the events calendar. Today we're going to provide an overview of the settings for the events calendar and some settings specific to events calendar pro. You can access the settings for the events calendar and events calendar pro from the WordPress admin by going to events settings. And here you see the splash screen. So I'm going to click on settings and these settings offer a lot of cool options to get your calendar looking just the way you want it. Let's start off with the general tab. Up at the top here in this box, you'll see a setting that says show the events calendar link. What this will do is this will add a link in the footer of the calendar views. And it's a way of saying thanks or kudos. And it shows other people who may be visiting your site that your event system is powered by the events calendar. Next, we have a viewing. First, we have the events URL slug. This determines where on the front end your events will live. This defaults to forward slash events, but can be changed to whatever you see fit so long as it's lowercase. The link that appears below the field will take you directly to your events page. Then we have the single event URL slug. Similar to the events URL slug, this determines the URL structure for a single event. Note that while you want this to be similar to the events URL slug, they cannot be identical. Notice how if the events URL slug defaults to plural, as in events, the single event URL slug has to be singular as an event. Keep this in mind as you make changes. Then we have include events in the main blog loop. Events will be included on your main page along with regular WordPress post. They will continue to show in all calendar views. Then we have condense events in series. This is for the events calendar pro. When checked, only the next upcoming event in a series will show. This can be useful to unclutter your calendar and when unchecked, all events in the series will show. Front end condensed event series title. This is also limited to events calendar pro. This gives a bit more flexibility than the event series setting covered above. When enabled, this offers a front end setting for users to decide whether they want to show all events in a series or just the next upcoming event. And last but not least, we have enable the month view cache. This setting caches your month view so that it loads faster for users. It's a nice way to increase the performance of the calendar. Next is editing. Now this first option here is tied to the events calendar pro called events manager. This box checks whether to enable the events manager as the default page for viewing events on the administration page. This next setting allows you to activate the block editor for events. When enabled, the Gutenberg block editor will be active on the edit screen for events pages. If this is unchecked, you will see the classic editor. Last but not least, we have show custom fields meta box. This option allows you to show or hide the default WordPress custom fields meta box when editing events within your dashboard. If you aren't already familiar with using this WordPress feature, you can go ahead and disable it. This will help to clean up the dashboard when creating events. Next, we have maintenance. This first option, move to trash events older than, this will move events to the trash automatically based on their end date. The second option allows you to merge duplicate venues and organizers, which is pretty self-explanatory. This option allows you to automatically merge identical venues and organizers. For this last area down below, we have debugging. When this is enabled, this will log debug information. This is probably not worth enabling unless you have the specific intent of checking for errors with the plugin code. Now we're going to take a look at the calendar display settings. This first option, default style sheet used for events templates. You could choose between three different style sheets depending on how much default styling you want on your calendar. The last two options may be particularly useful if you're wanting to add your own CSS. Then we have events template. This drop down allows you to change the look and feel of the calendar and how it integrates with your site. The plugin comes with two templating options by default, default events template and default page template. Your theme will likely include at least one more. Switch between these if you're finding the calendar does not look as you want it to on the site. While they may not get you 100% where you want to be, you'll be able to tell right off the bat which templating option is most compatible with your site and can make additional modifications as needed from there. Enable event views allows you to choose which views will be available to users on the front end. Default view is the view selected here will show on your calendar's initial load. From there, users can change to the views you've enabled above. Then we have the default mobile view, which is tied to the events calendar pro. When events calendar pro is activated, the view selected here will show in your calendar's initial load 
when on mobile devices. If you do not specify a view here, it will use the value of the above default view option. Then we have month view events per day. This controls the number of events listed on each day in month view. If there are additional events on that day, there will be a link to view all events on that day. Showing more events can affect load time, so be sure to review our article, which we'll link to in the video description below, about performance considerations. Next, we have number of events to show per page. This defines the number of events shown on each page. This applies to most list style views, list, photo, map, summary, menu, and organizer views. Other events are accessible from previous next events nav links. Note that this does not apply to day view, which always shows all events on that day regardless. Then we have show comments, which enables comments on event pages. We have disable the event search bar, which you can hide the search field on all views. You can choose to remove related events from the single event view with the classic editor. And you can also choose to hide weekends on the week view. This also affects the events by week widget. The events calendar comes with a number of options to allow you to configure the date and time formats. You can do a date with year format. You can configure a date without year format. You've got the month and year, weekday. You can also change whether it's a compact date format or if you want different ways of showing off the date and time, there's various formats. There's also an area where you can select a different symbol, such as the date time separator. You can change the at symbol to something else. You can also do that with the time range separator. You can enable what time of day is the cutoff. You can show time zone, which will append the time zone to the end of event scheduling information. This could be useful when you have events in numerous different time zones. And then we have time zone mode. And by default, we have used manual time zones for each event. Time zones can get rather tricky, but we do have an article we'll link to in the video description that covers time zones and how they work within the events calendar. Similar to our date and time settings, we also provide a way for you to change options and display settings for currency. The default currency symbol allows non-US users to change the currency symbol for event cost. The symbol can also be changed on an individual post. Users of event tickets may also need to set the currency setting with WooCommerce or easy digital downloads. There's also a default currency code. You could set the default currency ISO 4217 code for event cost with this option. This is a three letter code and is mainly used for data and SEO purposes. Then we have currency symbol follows value. Users with the default currency that follows the amount could check this box to have the currency symbol show after the money value. Next, we have Maps. This is where you can enable or disable Google Maps. This checkbox allows Google Maps integration for single event pages and venue pages. You can then turn Maps on or off on individual event pages. There's also a Google Maps default zoom level, and this defines how the map looks on venue and event pages. A low number will show a zoomed out map, while a high number, maximum of 21, will be completely zoomed in. Next, we have additional content. The first setting, enable the before HTML and shortcodes. You can check this box to show the before HTML from the text area below on events displayed via shortcode. There's also an option to add HTML before or after calendar. These fields allow you to add extra divs or other HTML before or after the calendar as it appears on the front end of the site. You can also use shortcodes here as well. This can also come in handy for adding subheads or announcements to your calendar. And the last setting on this page enables the after HTML on short codes. You can check this box to show the after HTML from the text area below on events displayed via a short code. As you can see on the screen, in our event settings, we have default content and additional fields tabs. These two options are only available in the events calendar pro. If you'd like more detailed information on what these fields provide, we'll have links to guides for both of these areas linked to in the video description below. There's also a tab at the top for integrations. Some features and add-ons require you to enter an API key or log into a third-party website so that the events calendar can communicate with an outside source. The events calendar comes with one API field for Google Maps. While many sites work fine without a Google Maps API key, other sites, particularly those with high traffic and multiple map features, need to have a key in order to properly render maps. 
For best results, we recommend getting a Google Maps API key and entering it into the available field. As you can see on the demo website, we have Google Maps API and we have one available that's already built in here. And this is where you would place your Google Maps API key. Some of our premium plugins require additional API keys to function properly. Please make sure to check your integration settings tab for details. If you run into any issues, we invite you to check out the help page within the plugin. You can find that under the events. Click on help and you'll see this page. We spent a lot of time devising the help page so it's as valuable as possible to the community. Do you have an integration question or a bug? This is where you would go first. Aside from giving you an overview of our philosophy and how we treat support issues, it will direct you to valuable places like our tutorials, documentation, and our help desk. We built this plugin to serve you and tried to cram as much information that we could to help you succeed where possible without making it feel like an inundation, or so we hope. If you are running Events Calendar Pro, the Help tab will also display a black box labeled System Information. Sometimes when we are working with a support issue, we may ask you to share this information so that we can learn more about the site's specifications. We have a tutorial linked below in the video description that will walk you through the process. If you run into any issues or require additional support, don't hesitate to contact our support desk.